Eric Mangini was hired on January 7, 2009 to become the new head coach of the Cleveland Browns. While the press conference featured many of smiles, the beginning of the 2009 season did not. Mangini's club started the season 1-11, scoring 6 or less points in 7 of the first 12 games. Mangini was eventually fired at the end of the 2010 season after losing his final four games, including a 41-9 home blowout loss to the rival Steelers in Week 17. However, Mangini's tenure in Cleveland was not all bad. In fact, he is just one of four Cleveland head coaches in the expansion era to play winning football over the course of a 16-game stretch, a stretch this video will be taking a closer look at. A key member of Mangini's staff in Cleveland was defensive coordinator Rob Ryan, brother of then New York Jets head coach Rex Ryan and son of the infamous head coach Buddy Ryan. On the offensive side of the ball, a young Brian Dable was Mangini's offensive coordinator, his first time in such a role. Dable, the now Giants head coach and former Bills offensive coordinator alongside star quarterback Josh Allen, came with Mangini from the New York Jets, where he served as quarterback's coach. The first game of winning football in this 16-game stretch came against the Browns' divisional and regional foe, Pittsburgh Steelers. In playoff contention, the Steelers desperately needed a win to have a chance to repeat as Super Bowl champions. However, Josh Cribbs and the Browns had other ideas. A menace in the return game and rushing attack, Cribbs had 200 all-purpose yards, including 8 rushes for 87 yards. Running back Chris Jennings added 73 yards on the ground and a touchdown to help the Browns score 13 points despite starter Brady Quinn's rough 6-for-19 passing effort. Rob Ryan's defense was the star of the Thursday night matchup, sacking Ben Roethlisberger eight times and holding the Steelers' attack to just 218 yards. The win was the Browns' first over the Steelers since 2003, snapping a 12-game losing streak in the rivalry. Carrying momentum from a rivalry win, the Browns traveled to Kansas City, where two Browns had career days that will never be forgotten. After breaking the NFL record for career kickoff return touchdowns, Cribs padded his record-breaking numbers with another touchdown return, this one going for 103 yards and pulling the Browns back within four points before the half. The other Browns player who had a history-making day was running back Jerome Harrison who broke Jim Brown's team record for rushing yards in a game with 286 yards on the ground. On 34 carries, Harrison also scored three touchdowns. As of 2022, Harrison's 286 rushing yards in one game is the third best individual performance of all time. With the game tied at 34 and just over a minute remaining, quarterback Brady Quinn showed off his athleticism, running for a 24-yard gain into Kansas City territory. Unfortunately, Brady Quinn suffered a foot injury on the play, and this would be his last game ever in a Browns uniform. Off the timeout, Royal goes in motion. And Harrison, first down and more. Jerome Harrison walking the tightrope and will take it in for the touchdown. 44 seconds left. After Harrison's touchdown, the Browns sealed the victory as the final pass hit off the crossbar, giving the Browns their second consecutive victory. After a road win, the Browns came back home for two matchups with the Raiders and the Jaguars. Against Oakland, Derek Anderson made his return as starting quarterback, throwing a touchdown pass to Muhammad Massaqua and completing 8 of 17 throws for 121 yards. The Browns' defense forced three Charlie Fry interceptions and sacked the former Browns quarterback four times. 
Running back Jerome Harrison fouled up his legendary performance with another strong game, rushing this time for 148 yards and a touchdown in the Browns' 23-9 win over the Raiders. Against the Jaguars, the Browns cruised to their fourth straight victory. Josh Cribbs shined again in the Wildcat, running for 47 yards and a touchdown on six carries. The Browns' defense continued to cause havoc, sagging David Girard three times and picking him off once. Big Girard looking. Girard over the middle. Picked off! Running back Jerome Harrison dominated again, this time with 127 yards and this score. The win was the Browns' fourth in a row, a stretch in which the Browns outscored their opponents 100-66. Next up, following a very, very long off week, was a road matchup with Tampa Bay. The Browns came out of the gates quickly as new Browns quarterback Jake DeLome threaded the needle to Mohamed Massaqua on a 41-yard touchdown pass to give the Browns an early 7-0 lead. Behind a two-headed monster attack at running back in Jerome Harrison and newcomer Peyton Hillis, acquired in a trade for quarterback Brady Quinn, the Browns continued to thrive in the running game. Peyton Hills' 10-yard touchdown run gave the Browns a 14-3 lead late in the second quarter. Driving with a chance to go up by three scores before the half, Jake DeLome made a back-breaking error, forcing a ball and having it get picked off by Rondé Barber, who helped set up a Tampa Bay touchdown before the break. After the Buccaneers took a lead on a late fourth-quarter touchdown pass, Brown's linebacker Eric Barton missed an opportunity to potentially run a fumble back into Tampa Bay territory, and the Browns ultimately fell to the Buccaneers by a final score of 17-14. The Browns played two more close games in Game 6 and 7 of this stretch, first hosting the visiting Chiefs in Game number 6. After Peyton Hillis bullied his way into the end zone for a touchdown, Josh Cribbs caught a Seneca Wallace touchdown pass to give the Browns a 14-10 second quarter lead. However, the offense failed to score in the second half, and a second quarter interception return for a touchdown, paired with a fourth quarter Kansas City drive which resulted in a field goal, left the Browns losers of two straight by a combined total of five points. In game number seven, Peyton Hillis became a national name, running for 144 yards and a touchdown on 22 carries, while also adding 36 receiving yards. His touchdown run before the first half ended pulled the Browns within four, and Seneca Wallace's one-yard touchdown pass to Ben Watson gave the Browns a three-point lead in the fourth quarter. However, a spectacular Flacco touchdown pass to Anquan Bolden sealed a Ravens victory handing the Browns their third straight heartbreaking defeat. In game number eight against the Bengals, the Browns started quickly. Got on second and seven. Browns are threatening. To the end zone, touchdown! Evan Moore! After the early touchdown, Peyton Hillis continued to run the ball hard, running this time for 102 yards and one touchdown. Rob Ryan's defense terrorized Carson Palmer all day, sacking him four times and forcing two Bengal turnovers. After Peyton Hillis clinched the game with a first down run, the Browns got back on the winning track, defeating the Bengals 23-20. In game number nine, Seneca Wallace, Peyton Hillis, and the Browns had momentum following their recent win. After Hillis and Wallace made dazzling plays to give the Browns an early lead against the Falcons, disaster struck when Wallace was injured on a sack in the second quarter, forcing Jake DeLome into action. DeLome struggled mightily all afternoon, and a late, costly pick six 
sent the Browns home 20-10 losers against the talented Falcons. Losers of four out of five games, despite outstanding defensive performances by Rob Ryan's unit, it was clear that the Browns needed better quarterback play than what Jake DeLome was giving. With Seneca Wallace out for several weeks, Eric Mangini announced rookie third round pick Colt McCoy would make his debut in game number 10 on the road in Pittsburgh. The Browns would lose the game 28 to 10, but Colt McCoy completed 23 of 33 passes for 281 yards and a touchdown, giving the Browns some hope that maybe Colt McCoy could provide some answers at the quarterback position. However, McCoy would have to prove himself against tough competition, with New Orleans, the former Super Bowl champion, Tom Brady and the New England Patriots, and Rex Ryan's New York Jets on the horizon. With a young quarterback in Colt McCoy on the road making his second career start against the reigning Super Bowl champions, Eric Mangini and the Browns had to break out all the plays in the playbook. After forcing an early punt, the Browns ran a play on the punt return, having Josh Cribbs throw the ball across the field to cornerback Eric Wright, who almost scored on the play. The Browns would be held to a field goal to take an early 3-0 lead. Later in the first quarter, Peyton Hillis got the Browns into the end zone. The special teams tricks were not done in the first half, as on this play, Reggie Hodges faked the punt and ran for 68 yards at the middle, breaking numerous tackles and getting the Browns inside the 10-yard line. After Phil Dawson added a field goal to make it a 10-point game, linebacker David Bowens picked off Drew Brees to get Cleveland back into the end zone and build a 17-point lead for the Browns. It was a tough day for Drew Brees, who threw four interceptions and was sacked by the Browns three times. Up by 13 with just under four minutes remaining, David Bowens in the Browns defense put the game away for good. Second and 10. Oh, that's After being let down by its offense in the first five games of the season, the Browns' defense took matters into their own hands in New Orleans. The Browns won 30-17 over the Saints, despite the offense only gaining 210 yards. The game seemed to serve as a statement game for both Mangini and Rob Ryan, as Mangini broke out numerous successful trick plays on special teams, and Rob Ryan's defense mystified Drew Brees all afternoon long. With the Super Bowl champs defeated, the Browns moved on towards another group of champions in Bill Belichick, Tom Brady, and the Patriots. The 6-1 Patriots were a particular interest to coach Eric Mangini, as he was coaching against his former boss and former Browns coach, Bill Belichick. And on the first drive, Peyton Hillis made a statement. New England 42-yard line. Hillis. The Browns, backed by a raucous Cleveland Browns stadium, exploded on offense early and often. After a nice throw and catch between Evan Moore and Colt McCoy set up the Browns in the three-yard line, Peyton Hillis bulldozed his way into the end zone, giving the Browns an early 10-0 lead. The good start for the Browns soon translated into an all-around good game, especially for Browns rookie quarterback Colt McCoy, who began to show fans why the rookie could become the long-term future of the organization. 
Against New England pressure, McCoy was able to maintain his composure, rolling out of the pocket several times and finding his receivers on the run for first downs. Just as they had a week ago, the Browns dove into their bag of tricks, this time running a fumble Ruski play, which resulted in a chancy Stucky rushing touchdown. It wasn't just the Browns' offense having fun on this day. Rob Ryan's defense continued to shine, including making a huge stand in the red zone late in the first half as they forced Patriots tight end Rob Gronkowski to fumble at the three-yard line. In the third quarter, the Browns took full control. It was a dream day for the Browns and their fans alike, as the home team outgained the Patriots 404 yards to 283. With Tom Brady watching on hopelessly from his sideline, Peyton Hillis, who rushed for 184 yards and two touchdowns, put an exclamation mark on the day. Second and six. Give it to him again. The hope and excitement for Cleveland Browns football was palpable, with a promising young quarterback in Colt McCoy defeating teams led by Drew Brees and Tom Brady in back-to-back -back weeks, and their new running back, Peyton Hillis, taking the lead by storm, running over players week after week on his way to the end zone. With the offense clicking, a dominant defense with promising rookies in Joe Hayden and TJ Ward being immediate contributors, the Browns seem primed for future success. After a big win, the Browns had another tough game in Game 13 against the 6-2 New York Jets. Just one week removed from their best performance, the Browns' offense came out firing against the Jets. Though the Jets stifled the Browns' offense for much of the second half, Colt McCoy had an answer in the game's final two minutes. They line up Jason Taylor for down line at two. Three-point stance. Boy, stance for two. Fires in, and the ball is caught. Wow, Jackson, the 21, in traffic, Benjamin Watson. The 17 and a first. The Browns had all the momentum, and that continued after a Peyton Hillis third down got them a first down near midfield. However, the next third down play, that was a momentum killer. Blitz, 
as a Browns fan, that still hurts to watch 13 years later. Unfortunately, the Jets scored a touchdown later in overtime and the Browns' two-game winning streak was over. The Browns' offense started strong with this incredible touchdown pass from McCoy to Hillis in Jacksonville, but the offense sputtered most of the day. The defense forced six Jacksonville Jaguars turnovers, but a long screen pass to Maurice Jones-Drew with just over two minutes left set up the Jaguars for a game-winning touchdown, sending the Browns home as a heartbreaking loser yet again. Sitting at 7-7, seven and seven, the Browns now needed to win out against the Panthers and the Dolphins to finish the 16-game stretch with a winning record. At home against the Panthers, Peyton Hillis shined with Colt McCoy out with an injury. Hillis ran for three first-half touchdowns, helping the Browns build a 21-7 lead. However, two costly Jake DeLome interceptions, including one return for a touchdown, brought the Panthers within one point late. However, John Casey's game-winning field goal went wide left in the final seconds, securing a Browns win. In the final game against Miami, the Browns' defense was superb, forcing three turnovers and holding the Dolphins to 281 yards. After a big pass to Mohamed Massaqua set up the drive, Jake DeLome found tight end Ben Watson for the Browns' only touchdown. After a Mike Adams interception set up the Browns to score late, Phil Dawson nailed a short field goal to secure a winning 16-game stretch for the Browns. Overall, the Browns went 6-3 at home during this stretch and outscored their opponents 329-308. to The Browns started five quarterbacks during these 16 games, and they combined for 10 touchdowns and 14 interceptions. The Browns had a formidable running attack, with its two primary running backs running for more than 1,600 yards and 16 touchdowns. Brown's wide receivers were not utilized often, but Peyton Hillis and Ben Watson combined for over 1,000 yards and 6 touchdowns. Rob Ryan's unit was solid all around, but these six players led the way. Notably, Marcus Bernard had 10 sacks in these 16 games. Phil Dawson made 28 of 34 field goal attempts and made every extra point. Over the course of these 16 games, here's how the rest of the teams in the NFL did. With a better quarterback, it's possible with Rob Ryan's defense, Eric Mangini and the Browns could have won even more than nine games over this stretch. While undeniably Eric Mangini's 10-22 tenure was not an overall success, they definitely did have their moments. These last couple of weeks, they're playing hard. They look like a much different football team than we saw a couple of weeks ago.